Our topic today is, is it worth it? Authors who wanted to give up, but just didn't. Um, like I said, I really want this to be a show of encouragement. Um, I know there's been plenty of times when I've been working on a project and, you know, I'm just like, man, it's like you have such these, these great ideas, but you know, when you get in the heart of it, then that's when you thinking it, Ooh, I shouldn't have started this. But then you just think to yourself, I done gone so far with it. I, it's no way I should give up, you know? And so that's why I really am thankful that these authors are here on the show today, just so that they can, um, one, motivate you, but also give you those tools to use as your armor when you feel like, you know what, it's not worth it. And then you can think about, you know, possibly what these ladies have said. Um, another thing is, if this is your first time ever tuning into the show, thank you so much. Um, what I would love for you to do is go ahead and share this video now so that um, more viewers will know about our authors, their books, as well as this show. And the way that we make this show a lot more interactive is when you post your questions and comments in the comment field. Now, if you're watching from any other page other than Martinique Y. Brown, I need you to come on over to my page so that I'm able to see those questions and comments. And again, I can relay those um, to our authors. So ladies, thank you so much for being on the show today. Yes, yeah, a hey. blessing. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for having yeah. me. You are welcome. So Aleda, we're going to start with you. Can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and how long you've been a published author? Yes, uh, my name is Aleda Duncan. I hail from Columbia, South Carolina. I began writing at the age of 13. Um, I've been self-published since December of 2018, and um, so far I have six books under my belt, and I plan to uh, produce many more. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So now I know that you, um, you all might be thinking that, you know, we have a, how do you pronounce your um, daughter's name, Trine? Deshari. So y'all might be thinking her name is Deshari, but it's not. <laughs> it's Trine. <laughs> But Trine, can you just let our viewers know just a little bit more about yourself and how long you've been a published author? Um, I self-published my book in July of 2017. Um, and that was the first book I ever published at all. And mm. so it was an interesting process for me, but I just did my second one as well. Oh, congratulations. Congratulations. But I'm from Shreveport, Louisiana, y'all. Oh. <laughs> yes. And so um, now, Joyce, your pen name is actually J.A., correct? Yes, J.A. Smith. J.A. Smith. So um, were you saying that you live in Baton Rouge? Uh -huh. Well, I'm, I live in Houston, but I'm from Baton Rouge. Come on now. And yes. you know what? I used oh. to live in New Orleans. Woo -woo. Really? And wow. I taught in New Orleans for several years. Oh, I love season. that city. Yeah. So, um, J.A. Smith, can you just tell us a little bit more about yourself and how long you've been a published author? Well, I am um, originally from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I'm currently a high school English teacher. Mm -hmm. And I've been a high school English teacher for about, uh, I think this is year 21. Wow! Yeah. Yes, it's been you don't even look long like you can't be long time under your belt. Yes, <laughs> yeah, it's been 20, 21 years, and I've written a lot of different things, films, plays, short stories. But the book, by far, this was the hardest. It literally yeah. took me ten years wow, to okay. actually write and uh, complete that book, and so it will be hot off the presses in about a couple of weeks. Oh, that's good. Yes. And so I actually did a post about um, uh, people that write screenplays. So now if you all are um, authors and you're interested, um, J.A. Smith's contact information is listed in the description that's box. Correct. And all of their information is listed in the description box. But reach out to her if you're interested in getting your book um, turned into a screenplay. Yes. So now, April, can you just tell us a little bit more about yourself and how long you've been a published author? Well, hello. Um, I've been a published author since 2000, November 2018. I wrote my first book. I am from a little country town called Arcadia, Florida. Okay. If anybody knows where that's at. Um, I decided to write about my life. That was my first book. 
Um, I've written five other books since, and I am currently working on another book. Okay. I am, I publish, actually, I went through a lot of different other publishing companies, but I kind of hit a brick wall, so I decided to venture out and try to figure out how to do it on my own. Okay. That's what I did. Okay. And your mic is static in a little bit. Um, can you take out your headphones all together? And let's see if that's a little bit better for us. Um, so I want to give a shout out to Patrice River. She's watching. Patrice, make sure you go ahead and share this video now. And I see we have some more people other than Patrice that's watching. Just give us a virtual shout out. Let us know um, that you're in the virtual world and uh, say hello to us. So um, Trine, what genre do you write? And can you tell us about the latest book that you've written? Um, I just, I write poetry, um, more than anything. And, um, the second book is just a trans, it's a transition into, um, more of a testimonials about how God really keeps us when we think all is said and done and, and we have no hope left. And mm. I wrote this book. It's called, it's titled Destructive Reconstruction. Things that are destructive that happen to us, things we do to ourselves that are destructive, mm -hmm. and how yet still God keeps us. That's good. In spite of. Mm -hmm. That's and so good. Um, had some friends to share some really heart touching stories with me about just how God kept them. And I felt like those stories may be a testimony for somebody else. So those stories, did you just um, write it into a poem for them? Yes. Okay, I understand. That's yeah. cool. I felt like, you know, sometimes when you're trying to get your point across, writing too much to get your point across may be too, you know, much more than what someone may want to read. Mm -hmm. um, but by writing it as a poem, it's short and it gets right to the point of just saying, hey, look, God saved me. He was there yeah. for me. He watched yeah. over me. And so I felt like writing their story as a poem was a, a short, quick way to say, look, God's got you. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So now what about you, J.A.? What genre of um, book? Well, this you said this is your first book, correct? Yes. Okay, so now what genre is this book? And can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, Daddy Syndrome is a fiction book. And it really it's, it's a true story that's not true, if that makes sense. So okay. it's basically... Um, inspiration came from all of the years that I was teaching and I would hear a lot of my students talk about how they hated their fathers and really? how their father was on fire. They wouldn't spit on him to put out the fire. And this was years and years of um, broken relationships and how um, you would hear uh, the kids talk about how their mothers wouldn't allow their fathers to be present. And I actually was in class one day and I was hearing um, another student tell a story and I was fascinated about you know how she got initiated into a gang and how she didn't have a very good relationship with her father and the words just began to flow. And so as, um, as I began to write the story, it really turned from the perspective of the student to the mothers and really talking about how no one is irreplaceable and how fathers are um, very important in the lives of their children and how we should allow them to parent when there's nothing major other than just your attitude or the issues you have with him that would stop him from being a father. And so that's how um, Daddy Syndrome was birthed. So now would you say that your target for this book is single mothers? Um, yeah, single mothers, it could be married women that are um, co-parenting and the relationship with the father of their children is not as strong as they would like it to be. Okay. Um, it's really for anyone that actually has children, period. Just so they, because the relationship may be fine now. But what, for, you know, if something happened to whether maybe they were to divorce or that was to be some sort of hurt feelings, because I've met a lot of um, married people, the relationship wasn't as good as it should be. And the husband or wife is talking about the other person to the children or in front of the children. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to just help mostly women understand to not downplay the role of the father, because, you know, especially a lot of women, you know, they're strong, they can survive a lot, they can handle a lot, and they feel that they're making it and the presence of the father is not necessary and that's not true. That is so true, that's so true. Mm -hmm. So now, um, what about you, April? What genre mm -hmm. do you write and can you tell us a little bit about your latest book? Um, my, I, I, mine is about my life, of course. Um, I'm a survivor of childhood molestation and rape. 
So I decided, you know, to put it, put my story in a book because it needs to be out there because that is a silent crime. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't come forward because they're afraid, you know, that people won't believe them. You know, you're, you're, you're just, you feel like it's your fault, you know, and for years I carried that, you know, and sometimes we do things. We, we turn to different things. Some people turn to drug and alcohol abuse, you know, to cope. So I went through a stage of severe depression. Um, I, I was in, in two, in two, I was put in, you know, a, an institution for a while. Uh-huh. And um, it wasn't for long, but it allowed me to sit down and really say, hey, if you don't forgive these people who did these things to you, you're going to continue to have this cycle. So I decided to just write, write. And every sentence that I wrote, it was hard because you have to relive everything. But it helped me. It was therapy for me. So I said, you know, if this helped me, some it it can can help someone else. So that's why I put my book, you know, out there in my life. So Wow, wow. That, that's and then amazing. I said, you know what, there's so many children out there that's afraid. So I decided to write a book called No Means No. And it's it's basically teaching children that it's okay to say no. And teaching them about body, body boundaries. And that if someone touches them inappropriately, that it's okay to tell. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter who it is. If it could be your mama, your daddy, the teacher, the bus driver, just tell somebody. Because yeah. it, it affects children, it, it it affects you all the way into your adulthood. Adulthood, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. yeah, definitely. And I just want to thank you for um, writing such a book like that. You know, because like you said, it wasn't easy for you because you had to relive those things. Um, so I definitely commend you for um, sharing your story in order to help other individuals um, as well. Um, so what about you, Aleda? Um, can you tell us about the genres of book that, books that you write and um, the latest book you've written? Yes, um, like uh, Miss Trine, um, I am a poet at heart. Um, that's what I started off writing and then it progressed to short stories. And um, my books are like gumbo. You get everything. You get real life mm-hmm. events that's inspired by people that I've known through hardships, you know, child molestation, rape alcoholism, drug abuse, um, things that I witnessed growing growing up, being poor and things like that, and the abuse that I suffered in my own life. Um, And then I'll write, you know, a romance novel. Mm -hmm. Then I'll write a spiritually based novel or a novella or erotic, um, um, which is the latest book that I just released. It's a, uh, it's half and half. It's half erotica, and at the, um, towards the end of the book, it's an erotic short story. So in the mm-hmm. beginning, it's um, erotic poetry. And towards the end, you get introduced to an uh, erotic short story. And it kind of mirrored my first book. That's how I did my first book. Mm-hmm. But um, because I'm growing spiritually, I do want to get into more like uh, faith-based type writing um, because clearly the creator gave us a platform and however we use our pen as a weapon, uh, it can affect people's souls. You know, like, do you want to feed people filth because they have enough of that? Or do you want to feed people inspiration? You know, mm-hmm. like what the sisters was talking about, the children who have father issues or, you know, the children who have been molested. You know, I think it's important that we as writers with the power that we have through our words, we have the ability to either inspire people the right way or the wrong way. Mm-hmm. And I don't want that to be, you know, on my soul's contract. Oh, well, Alayda, look what you led thousands <laughs> of people to do, you know? Yeah. So I'm clear to my readers that this recent book that I released, that will be the last erotic book. And I, I just want to get more into, you know, inspiring people, you know, and letting them know, hey, you're not alone. Basically. Wow. That's amazing. Um, and you know what? The crazy thing is, I know what genre of book. Like I knew about this last genre um, that you wrote, but I really wasn't expecting you to say that. <laughs> so, um, so April, um, did you want to give up writing altogether, or was it just more so um, just writing one of your books? 
I wanted, I did want to give a writing in us, a, a write to today, uh, because it's an, it's a out outing for if people that really don't speak much, because mm -hmm. I am, a, I, I may not look like, but I'm, I kind of lay back and <laughs> it's hard for me to really speak. So that is my way of speaking and that's my way of getting things out. And as long as you can write, I just tell anybody to write. If you got an issue of with, with corresponding with other people and getting things out, your emotional, your your, your feelings, or anything, write it down because it, it, it helps. It's therapy. It really helps. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna keep writing. I had an issue in the beginning, yes, because I the the, the I was telling my life. And mm -hmm. who who wants to tell the deep dark stuff that they threw back and threw back? You know, but in the beginning, yes, I had a difficult time. But mm -hmm. I will write now. The writing is everything. Yeah, it is really everything. Mm -hmm. So now, what about I, you? I oh, sorry. It. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, you were saying that you highly recommend it. Yes, I highly recommend a writing. If if you're a parent and you have a teen, even even the kids under that's five and under that can write give them a journal and allow them to write and express their feelings because children, they will not talk to their parents, you know, or they'll talk to someone else sometimes, but it's best for them to be able to write. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I want to give a shout out to Rita Henderson. Um, she's in the, she's in the house. She's watching. So Rita, if you can go ahead and share this video now for us, and that would be great. Um, J.A., what about you? Did you want to give up um, writing altogether, or was it just one book? And the reason why I wanted to ask that specific question before, you know, I went all on my tangent or the other questions is because um, with this topic, you know, the topic is, is it worth it? Are authors who want to give up but didn't? I wanted to specifically know, was it, you know, just this one book, or was it like, everything you like I'm just I'm, I'm done with all of this you know I'm about to just work my regular job and that's it uh but how was it for you was it just a book or writing all together it was absolutely just the book okay <laughs> um as I said it had been a 10-year journey and I think it's because I didn't understand the seriousness and the purpose behind it I thought that I was just telling a great story and so I had you know a lot of opposition that and you know I took it to a conference and you know had it um, had someone to do a critique of it and totally ripped it apart. I was walking through the conference doors and I saw people looking at my name tag and they were saying things like, oh, that's Joyce, oh, that's Joyce. And I'm like, who are these people and why am I such the center of attention? Well, it was because the person who was actually critiquing the book had a lot to say about it before I came to the conference because the subject matter was very touchy. No one wanted to think that their teenage daughters were um, having some of the issues that they had in the story and that the mothers um, had to really self-examine themselves and see what role is any mm. they played in it. And so it really caused a lot of, you know, a backlash at that particular conference. And so that was, you know, something. And then I, you know, started writing plays and doing really well with the plays, traveled across the country with them. And so it was like, why do I need this book? You know, this is mm. not important. And then I'd pick it back up. The story never left. Um, it was always in my head. I tried to, um, to write it as a play, didn't work. Tried to write it as a film, had a part in it, finished it, didn't work. And so one day I heard God say, don't write anything else until you finish this book. Mm, and okay. I was at a stage 10 years later where I really wanted to be yielded and understand what was purpose and what was you know the vision about for that. But yeah, I wanted to quit. The, um, the pages were yellow. They were frayed. Um, it was, I would sit there and I'd be almost in tears writing, I was, you know, just frustrated mm -hmm. um, about, you know, writing. So I was writing in obedience with an attitude, if that makes sense. But the more I really started to, um, to answer the call that God had placed in my heart regarding this book and really understand that it wasn't just something to entertain, then it became, I have to put this out regardless mm -hmm. to what people will say. But I, when I tell you, I stopped and started over that period of 10 years, tried everything to tell the story in a different medium when it was intended to be a book. And let me tell you something, in my mind, I was like, this is the last book. 
that I am going to write. I'm not writing another book and I probably won't write another fiction book to be honest. But this story here is something that definitely it needed to be birthed and I wanted to quit every other second when writing it. I really I, have, I, I guess I have a question though. Why did you why did you not want to write it as a book? Is it because that was new territory for you? Well, I always wanted to be a, um, an author um, from eighth grade. That's when you know, I first actually started writing. But when I started writing that particular book, it was just so difficult and I kind of got tired mm-hmm. of it. And then I said, okay, well, you know, um, plays were becoming popular. Let me try something different because I was just seeing myself as a writer, not as a servant. And so, um, and I say that meaning, I just assumed that this is just something to entertain, but that's not what it was. And so, it needed to be in that particular medium. And it was, it was, it was very challenging. And coming from someone who, you know, had written several plays and short films and all of this, that particular medium was a problem. And so um, I, I really believe it's because, you know, I didn't understand that it was meant to actually administer to people and hopefully to re- help to repair relationships and all of that. So it was kind of a rebelliousness, mm-hmm. you know, attached to it. And yeah. yeah, it was, it wasn't that it was difficult to write, but it was difficult, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. I understand. So now what about you, Trine? Um, did you want to give up writing altogether or was it a particular book? I actually wanted to give up altogether. Mm-hmm. I said, after I released the first book, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing this again. I'm not going to put myself out there like that. And it took, you know, a really good friend to say, it's not for you. It's for other people. Mm-hmm. And you have to be obedient and write what God tells you to write, whether you want to write it or not. Mm-hmm. It's your praise is it's all in the obedience. You be obedient and write what God wants you to. No matter what anybody else thinks, no matter who it is, you write what he tells you. And in in being obedient to that, you know, like Joyce was saying, it's really hard because some of the things that you, you know, that you're given when you're listening to God, you know, tell you, write about this or write about that. And I'm going to give you the words that I want you to say. You, you pour out your, your heart and your soul to it. And sometimes when people are reading those things that you're writing, they're wondering if it was you that you're talking about within the story. And it may not even necessarily be you. And, you know, then you, you kind of start to see where people are looking at you just a little different thinking, um, did she really go through all of that? Not understanding that what you wrote is not even necessarily about you, mm-hmm. but you're writing because you're being obedient to what your purpose is for God, from God. And, I, you know, it's, it's hard to write about those things, especially when you relate so closely to them, mm-hmm. you know, to separate, you know, you kind of don't want to tell your story, but you got to tell your story. Yeah. And then you're trying to find that happy median. And how do I say this without it, you know, looking directly back at me? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And so that's the part that made me say, I don't, I don't want to tell another story about anything that is so deep and so personal, but I'm just thankful that in this time around with this second book, God gave it to me differently. He wanted me to let people know they are safe in my arms as long as they trust me and believe in me. He gave it to me differently mm-hmm. this time so that I I could write it because I really, I said, I'm not writing another book. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now what about you, um, Aleda? Did you want to give up writing altogether or just a book? Um, I was never going to give up writing because that's just who I am. That's my nature, but um, being published, yeah, because for me, it was like, you know, I always felt like I was an innovative type writer, Um, like I brought a new style, you know, Um, and I just felt like my talent wasn't being recognized, and you know, Mm. as as an indie author, we go through that a lot. Um, It seemed like these big name publishers It's like they're the ones that get all of the notoriety, but then you'll have underdogs like me who no shade, but are just as good. But because we don't have that huge following that that huge fan base, we get overlooked. And um, for a while, I became discouraged 
but um, I knew like, I know this is the gift that the most high has given me. Um, and he wants me to use my pen to create power, mm -hmm. to inspire others, to be a voice for the voiceless. And because of that, that was my motivation for not giving up. And that was the reason why um, I was so drawn to this topic. It touched me because that's what I'm experiencing right now. But even though I want to give up, I constantly, you know, sit in front of my computer and just start on the next book. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I can't give up because even if I never get the notoriety, the people who are meant to read my book and who it's meant to touch is going to touch. Right. And that's, that's, that's satisfaction to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. So just by a show of hands, is it normal? Do you feel that it's normal for authors to feel like they want to give up at times? Wow. Look at that. So April, why do you think that is? Well, personally, I, I didn't say in the beginning, but personally, when I first started out writing my book, Prisoner of the Mind, I, I had a publisher, but it all ended up to be a money thing for him. And I was very discouraged about that part because I was like, is this a money thing for publishing companies? You know, um, I lost a lot of money and I was I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, if people read this, they're going to feel bad because they're going to, because I'm from such a small town, mm -hmm. you know, I, I didn't have to put a name there because they can pinpoint the location, you know, the, the, the areas that I put in there. I, I was so focused on how other people would perceive it to the point where I was like, you know what, I don't want to do this. I want to do this. But I just, I just asked God to lead me and just put me in the direction that he wants me to do, be in and I was like you know what this is going to help somebody it's mm -hmm. going to help somebody else so just keep doing it, keep doing it so I just kept doing I just persevered and kept going but it is difficult it's difficult to the point where you do want to just throw in the towel and say no I'm not going to do this because you got so many different things coming at you mm -hmm. so J.A. if this is um something normal like, is it any way that an author can overcome from this totally taking them out the game? I think that, first of all, if you are a believer, then you have to understand that it's not about your knowledge, the gifts and talents and everything that God has blessed you. It's for someone else. And depending upon your relationship with God, it's not about how you feel. I don't believe there was ever a scripture in the Bible that said, I feel like and we should go off of the way that we feel. So um, for me, pushing through the book, it really was out of respect for God, out of respect for the talent and the gifts that he had given me and the maturity of knowing that despite how I feel, I'm here for a purpose and this is a part of it. So for the believer, the, mo the motivation has to be greater than all of the obstacles in order to pursue um, you know, completing this book. Then if you're not a believer, it's hard writing a book, period. Being able to, you know, um, expose yourself and be vulnerable and give up your craft, whether it's singing, dancing, writing, just being a allowing other voices and opinions in by itself is a lot. And sometimes that's a hurdle that um, many people can't get over. But the payout has to be better. It has to be greater, whether it's just saying this is something that um, I finish. I'm a finisher. I completed the task or having the, the knowledge that this is going to help someone. The motivation has to be bigger than money. It has to be bigger than notoriety. It has to be something that's going to intrinsically motivate you and push you towards finishing. Otherwise you won't because it is challenging. And if you are a believer on top of that in purpose, you're going to have opposition. So that's even more challenging than the average person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now how, if somebody felt like you, Trinae, when you were saying that um, when you wrote things, people begin to look at you differently. Is there any way that an author like yourself could possibly help people to know, okay, this isn't about me? Like, do you put that on the front page? <laughs> like, okay, these uh -huh. stories. <laughs> no, what I did was 
you know, as, as people would purchase a book and they would ask me, is this your story? And I would just tell them some of it is my story. Some of it are stories that other people have shared with me about their lives that fit into what I was writing about because I didn't just want it to be all my perspective. I wanted you to hear things that other people may have been going through, but just to put a whole situation together, it couldn't just be my story. And so I, I would explain to them that I pulled some of this information from other people, other friends that wanted to share that felt they had a, a lesson learned that applied to what I was writing about. So I would explain that to them up front. And I think that kind of helped because um, like you said, you know, when you're from a, a, a area where, you know, a lot of people know you or um, what you've been, what you've been through or what you've gone through, they tend to immediately think, you know, they know everything that's in there and everything is about you when really it's not. Mm -hmm. Because like in my first book, there was a lot of things in this, in that book that had absolutely nothing to do with me, but they were stories from other people that shared, they shared with me because it was part of what I was writing about. Mm -hmm. And that transition of getting, you know, people to understand that, hey, you know, we all have a story but how much of it you tell and, and how you write your story is what really, really matters. And so you, you want it to be in a way where they look at it, but yet still they see from meeting you that you're encouraged so they can be encouraged too by whatever it is that you've been through or whatever it is that you've written about. So that was the hard part for me being, you know, because like you, I, I've been teaching 15 years. I'm an English language arts teacher too. And it's hard when, especially like when the parents of those kids and they see your book and they go, oh, it's all about you. And, and you go, no, it's not all about me. So trying to separate those two moments sometimes is hard. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Aleda, with, you know, people wanting to give up and things like that, what are some of the stumbling blocks um, that maybe you have experienced or that you've heard other e authors experience that, um, you know, come in their way, you know, to make them just want to stop altogether? Um, it could be, you know, personal issues. Like right now, you know, my mom, she's been in the hospital for five months. Mm -hmm. So with me dealing with that and worrying about her and, you know, being stuck on, oh, I'm not getting the notoriety that I deserve, you know, but I'm learning I have to let that go. Um, like I said, it could be external issues or internal issues. Um, for me, um, it was just basically feeling like, well, you know, this is my gift, you know, God gave me this gift and I mean, I'm, I'm talented. Why can't everyone see that? And, yeah. but I had to, I had to realize that's not the reason why he gave me the gift. You know, like the sister said, like he places, he places these talents inside of us to be used for his glory only. And that's why I came under conviction. And I said, I can't, I have two erotic books, but I said, I, I can't keep writing that because the most high have used that as filth, mm -hmm. you know, because it's promoting fornication and, you know, things like that, you know, and I just feel like I have to be the one to be the voice for my generation. You know, I'm 27 and with all the craziness that's going on, someone has to, you know, show a different way, mm -hmm. you know, be different, you know, be a voice for the most high. And, um, but um, for me, I guess my stumbling block was wanting notoriety, but God dealt with me about that. It's, it's not about that, you know, it's about bringing glory to him. And so, yeah. So let me ask you this question and you can say, well, Martinique, you know what, let's, let's take that offline. Um, but do you feel that once I sell out of this last erotica book, you know, then I'm not going to print anymore. Like, how are you dealing with that internal struggle? Yeah. Um, you know, I actually uh, spoke with a friend of mine. Um, she goes to my church and she said that, you know, I should just, you know, don't even make any money off of it. She actually said that I should pull it off of Amazon. And, you know, mm. I mean, if I'm really serious about Christ, then yeah. that's a good point, you know? So it's funny you ask that because I'm actually battling right now. Like maybe I should yeah. just take it offline because I don't want to be, you know, a vessel 
you know, for lust, you know, promoting yeah. that. I really don't, you know, so yeah. That is so hard. Oh my God. It okay. Is. It Let is. me okay. So okay. So this this question is really off cuff. I have a <laughs> lot of questions off cuff, but like this one is really off cuff. <laughs> um and I just want to use this just as a sounding board for you, Aleda. So J A, if you was in Aleda situ like situation, what would you do? And all also viewers, this question is for you, you know. And, and I know a lady is a great sport, so this is why you know I'm talking to her. But what you, would let you let do, J A? Let me tell you. <laughs> The other, I have a play that's coming out that's called Grown Folks Business. And in the play, there's <laughs> the B word in there, right? Okay. And so, you know, people ask me, well, how is it, you know, being a minister? You know, what do you think about, you know, your writing? Where do you get your inspiration? Because this is not a um, Christian play. I mean, it's nothing that's over the top. And people be like, oh, she's not saved. Mm -hmm. But it was for the people. And so I wanted to make sure I dealt with those things. Okay. And so this is what I said. I said, okay, well, God, you know, I want to be in tune with you. I want to, I know that I'm called to those that are, you know, not saved and are unchurched. Mm -hmm. And I want to be able to draw their attention and then get the message. But I also don't want to compromise. Literally, this is the perfect question for me because this was maybe two or three days ago. I had a dream and in the dream that was like this, this tornado spinning life. And I, it scared me so much that when I woke up, I thought, okay, should I be getting under the bed or something? Mm -hmm. Because it seemed so real. But right before I woke up, I heard the voice say, don't compromise. Mm -hmm. I heard, and this was specifically me praying about, you know, should I take that out? How should I, um, you know, still deliver, con you know, content that's edgy and that will catch them but in such a way that they're able to receive the message. Yeah. Don't compromise immediately. And I was like, wow. And then I thought about, okay, so in the book, I had to go back like this book is at the publisher. We done done all these rounds of editing. If the book cover is done, everything is ready. Mm -hmm. Is there something in there that I'm supposed to um, change as well? And I'm like, don't tell me that. You know, I, I know like, that's right. Come on, like, come on, la, 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 la. <laughs> catch me on the next go round. But uh -huh. the, the thing that stood out the most in the dream was all of the trash that was whirling around inside of this, you know, this funnel that was like a tornado. And I really believe that what God is saying is that, you know. Um, we know that the Holy Spirit is the one that draws anyway, that there is a way if you allow him to guide you, he'll give you, you know, the words that you need and the things that you should be talking about. And right before um, I came, I was like, well, you know, let me pull up some scriptures or something to kind of attach to what it is that, you know, I believe about, you know, not quitting and things of that sort. And one of the ones that came up was about, you know, letting everything that you say and you do be pleasing to God. And I felt like that was confirmation again for me to just kind of go back come through and make sure that there's a purpose attached to it and you're just not wasting words mm -hmm. because we know words have life they have power so we don't yeah. want to waste anything so at the stage where i am right now without if there's not really anything to think about if you know that it's something that's contrary to the will then you pull it down because mm -hmm. if you think long, you study long, you study wrong, I believe that's yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's when you get like 20 orders in one day. Right. Uh -huh. exactly. Yeah. exactly, exactly. Yeah. 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 But so you now, know, oh, go know, ahead, go ahead. Listen, let me tell y'all something. I feel like this is a sisterhood, so I'm gonna keep it real with y'all now. <laughs> Don't you know that you know how I was mentioned about, oh well, I feel like I'm not getting the um, recognition that I deserve. I have one um, spiritually um, based book and it's called Satan, You Can't Have My Marriage. And that was the book that, that had the, the, the God element in, it, element in it, very strong. And don't you know, out of all of the books that I've published, that's the one that's the most popular. Mm -hmm. So that was God letting me know, like, this is what I want you to write. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So I just find that ironic out of all of these books that I've written, that's the one that's the most popular. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's my answer. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. So now what about you, April? Um, just looking back on all of the things that you've actually went through, do you feel that it's been worth it? It has definitely been worth it. Um, I've had so many people uh, inbox me, email me, different people, you know, that I thought wouldn't accept my book, me coming out saying different things, have, you know, basically applauded me 
Um, so it, it, it helped. So yes, I, I am thrilled that, you know, I decided to do it. It's good. It's good. What about you, Trine? Um, just looking back over some of the difficult times, um, do you feel like it's been worth it? Just, just keep trucking on and just plowing forward. Yes. And actually Sunday night, this past Sunday was a confirmation that I need to keep trucking along and write what he tells me to write. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know the young lady where I was, but, mm -hmm. um, my friend's house that I was over um, mentioned that I had, you know, written a book and she said, oh, I want to see it. And so I didn't give it directly to the young lady that was sitting there. I gave it to the person that asked for it. Mm -hmm. But then she passed it across to her. She said, I've been through all that in the last year. Mm -hmm. I want a book. And so I told her, I went and got her a book and I said, I always read one poem to people when they by the book because I want them to hear something from me in my voice as the author. Yeah. I said, what do you want me to read? And she, the page she flipped to, her eyes just watered up. She said, I'm I'm going to read this. She said, but I I know I'm going to cry if you read it to me. I said, well, I don't want to make you cry. So how about yeah. I read something to you? <laughs> and she said, okay. So I, I read something else to her to make her laugh because I knew she did not want to break down right there where she mm -hmm. was. Mm -hmm. But while I was there, I watched her stand there and read the page and she was like, oh my gosh, I really, really needed to hear those words. And so you never know whose life you're touching by writing what you're writing. Somebody may be looking for just those words that you put on paper to express mm -hmm. how they really feel, whether it's just within themselves or to somebody else. So it's definitely been worth it. Um, and as I was talking to my sister, both of them actually, about this second book and you know I let them read you know a couple of little samples from it um they was like sis you hit the nail on the head with that that touch me and I'm going if it touches if it's touching my own family I can only imagine how someone else is going to feel mm -hmm. when they read it and I just hope that it impacts them to stand on both feet and say I'm encouraged Mm -hmm. And so, yes, it's definitely been worth it. Even the, the males that I've met that have read the book said they felt encouraged by it. That's Some good. things in there. And for me, that, that made, especially, you know, to hear the men, y'all read it. Ooh, <laughs> that was a, you know, that's a whole other moment. I know that. Can I see from the mission to have someone, you know, come to you and say thank you yeah. for sharing yes. your story. It helped me. That's all we want, you know, to be able to encourage somebody else to know that it's okay. It's okay yeah. to come out. It's okay to, to, to express yourself regardless of how, how other people may interpret it. It's your yeah. life, you know, yeah. and it's time to speak up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Trinae, I think that you wanted to um, make a comment. Well, I wanted to ask, uh, I was going to tell her later, I, I like the question you asked her, what you going to do about this book? <laughs> <laughs> you brought a book. And my thoughts went to flying all over the place. And uh -huh. <laughs> why don't you write an erotica for married people, you know, to help them spice it up? You know I'm what? Just saying. I, I thought about that. That I was my thought. <laughs> I just wanted to get it out. It's going to be like a hundred. It's going to be about a hundred single people buying that wow. book. Yeah, it feels good. I'm 21 years married and I'll buy it. <laughs> well, I'm divorced, but I buy it. <laughs> like it okay that's the next topic <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but Alayda, what do you feel about that though um just looking back over everything that you've gone through do you feel like it's been worth it for you yes i do because you know uh in pain we find our power um and i feel like all of the struggles that i've been through um it's making me who God wants me to be. Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, out of all the books that I've written, you know, the one that's, you know, faith-based, that's, you know, pointing the readers towards him, you know, like basically because the divorce rate is so high, Satan loves attacking marriages with, you know, adultery and things like yeah. that. And, and people just want to give up so quick in divorce. And, you know, the father, he never wanted that for us. He wanted us to stick together through thick and thin and that's why my character Ollie she found that you know she mm -hmm. found that 
her and her husband found a way to stick together through Christ, praying and fasting together and, you know, fighting these demons together. You know what I'm saying? So um, I feel like with me beginning to write more books like that and reaching people, how these sisters are reaching people, um, this was God ordained, you guys, mm-hmm. because me and my girlfriend, we was just talking about talking about this she was like Alayda the father want to use you to you know reach our generation and you know be different you know be different from the Cardi B's and Nicki Minaj you know what the world likes but you know he he wants me to you know be that voice for him to speak to young people and let them know it's a different way so hearing these queens these goddesses (laughs) saying what they're saying in the books that they're writing it's it almost makes me want to tear up because I was just talking to my friend about this. And so yeah. this was God ordained. God is like, see you later. You see what they're writing and they're reaching people. This is what I want you to do. So I hear you, that's Most High. I good. hear you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's good. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to create this show. Um, you know, just hence the name of it, but it's really just to help other authors to hear that they're not on this journey alone. And that's why it is topical you know, just so, um, just an array of um, genres can come together and just discuss different things and also help the viewers as authors as well. Um, If you're just now tuning in, you're watching Authors Helping Authors, um, and we are talking about, is it worth it? Authors who wanted to give up, but they did not. So, J.A., what about you? Just looking back over, um, over everything, and I've, I've never heard a story like yours in that um, you shelved it for like 10 years, but you still follow through with it. How do you speak to those individuals that did shelve something for so long and they just say, uh, I don't have to do that. That's, that's my past. I'm not going to finish it. How one do you speak to those type of people? And then two, um, do you feel like it's been worth it for you? Um, I'll start with the has it been worth it. It has absolutely been worth it. If I could be selfish for a moment, um, the minute that I said, you know, yes, I'll go ahead and finish it. I, you know, had so many different um, blessings to come, the money that I needed to get it edited, published, literally checks upon checks, refunds upon refunds. Mm-hmm. You know, I um, had a th- paid a thousand dollars for my daughter's tuition and it was just sitting in my account. And I'm like, hey, when are you gonna get this money out of here? And mm-hmm. it's like, oh no, 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 no. That's you you get that back and you have more coming. I'm like, I'm sorry. He said, Yeah, she has these extra grants that um, you know, we've been giving her. And this was, you know, into mm-hmm. the semester, you know, and this literally I can track literally after, you know, really saying that I was going to be obedient and finish this that, um, you know, God gave the provision for it. And I had been one of the ones where you hear it all the time. If it's his vision, he'll provide. And I had never really fully experienced it like that. And it wasn't so much that I was getting out of the money, but it was really just to show how faithful he was. And when you're in a position where you don't really see how you're going to, to do something, to have God's faithfulness show up, it makes it all worth it. It sure do. Because it, it felt, you know, it was just like, I'm, I'm loved, I'm important. I actually have something to say. You know, what I have to say is significant. It just, it really affirms all of that. Mm-hmm. So it, it was 120% worth it. Even the 10 year process was worth it because the maturity level and the desire to be, you know, to just be in right standing with him is so much different then the, the young ego driven let me finish this book this is going to be great it's going to be on this bestseller list type person so uh-huh. it, it was worth it just to have that intimate relationship with god and to really see how he has my back and how he will continue to push his word forward through me um as far as people who have things that have been sitting on the shelves for years and ideas if those things keep you know, reoccurring, if every so often you're continually thinking on it, if it's something that is a part of your passion or your idea, and you can trace, you know, those themes, you know, in your past life and even currently, then that means that that is something for you to actually complete. It's something for you to finish. It does not matter how long it's been. Mm -hmm. Because every second is an opportunity to do and complete what it is that you've been here to do. And, you know, the Internet now, social media makes things so much more easier to get your product out. It doesn't have to be the best looking. It doesn't have to be, you know, the what's interesting to everyone else. It doesn't have to fit everyone else's personality. Mm -hmm. It has to be what it is that you know that you were supposed to do. So don't allow time. Don't allow age. Don't allow finances. Don't 
allow other people's voices, your own voice and other situations to derail you, even if it's just a little bit at a time, mm -hmm. right? A little bit at a time, move forward incrementally, step by step. And eventually you're going to finish it and you'll birth what it is that you're supposed to birth and you'll feel this relief, you'll feel this greatness and you're going to be on to your next one after that. It's yeah. so much, so much joy in just being obedient and doing the things that you're supposed to do. That's yeah. good. That's good. So now um, shout out to Michelle Jones and Cheryl Legrand um, that's watching right now. If you can go ahead and share this video now, that would be great. Michelle Jones said, I had someone tell me that my book I wrote was specifically for her. It helped her navigate the journey she was on. That is, that is really good. I'm telling you, when you get that, um, that sense of confirmation from somebody um, that, you know, reads your, your book or even purchases um, one of your products and you do hear those stories. That's why reviews are so important um, for authors to really just use those things as encouragement um, for them that they, to let them know, you know, okay, you know, I know people are buying it, but what, how do they feel about it? How has it impact, impacted their life? Um, but April, I do want to ask you, what support system do you actually have or what has actually helped you not to give up? My support system was my husband, of course, and my boys just pushing me and pushing me. Um, I just said, you know, I got to do this. This is something that needs to be done. So um, by my husband backing me up all the time, everything, he, he just constantly backs me up and I just... I just go from there and just yeah. keep going. You just got to keep going because life is hard. You know, mm -hmm. your past, it's its your past, but people, you know, it's your past, but people are not going to let you outlive your past. They're going to keep bringing it up. So why not just put it on out there in your own words? Because you don't want anybody to add and subtract. So just put it on out there. That's, that's, that's what I just kept going by my husband saying, you tell your story the way you're supposed to tell your story. Don't leave it out there and let somebody else dictate your story. So continue to write it down. So I just kept on writing. Yeah. And shout out to April's husband. Hopefully you're watching. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for encouraging April um, through this, um, just just this journey. But April, how would, it, how would you encourage people to handle um just the emotional roller coaster if they don't have that support system pray a lot of prayer because god can answer all prayers um as long as you stay humble and and, and sustain yourself within the lord you'll be okay and that's all i, I just say god is my key mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. he helped me along the way through things that i could not think about trying to fix our, myself you know we always try to fix stuff ourselves and end up making, making it worse yeah so i just continue to pray yeah pray and ask god to lead me where he wants me to go you know he already had me mapped out before i was born so you know the things that i went through i i used to say you know why me mm -hmm. why did i have to go through this yeah. You know, but I feel like, you know, this was my purpose. I had to go through that so I can get to where I'm in, I am now. Mm -hmm. So I can share my story to help someone else, you know, come out and speak. Yeah. Because it's yeah. nothing like speaking your story and getting it out. It's therapy. So, yeah. True. So what about you, Jay Ace? Um, I was just call, about to call you JA support, mm -hmm. but um, <laughs> sound like a company. Um, but JA, what support system did you have, and um, that really just helped you not to give up? Um, my students, uh, because I would share some of the stories with them, and they said, "Miss, are you finished with this book?" And I'm like, seven years in the home, <laughs> not yet." <laughs> um, my my students were a big support. I had you know friends who I would share different you know, excerpts with, and they'd always ask about it. Um, my daughter, that was one, that was one of the biggest ones because I wanted to see her, um, wanted her to see me finish something mm -hmm. that was very important to me because I wanted to be that example. And then also I wanted to make sure that I'm beginning to build generational wealth, you know, for her and for her children and her children's children. So mm -hmm. that was something that I kept in my, um, 
And um, lastly, it really was just about being obedient. What I realized, and I know this is probably not going to be popular with people, but I realized that it does not have to happen. A lot of, you know, we hear about the plans of God and that, you know, his word will not return void, but there are parts that we have to do. There are things that we have to play. And I realized that if I don't get up and do the work, if I don't get up in faith and utilize the gifts that he has given me, then it doesn't have to happen. I will be 10 years down the road again, sitting there talking about what well, I'm going to do this and I'm going to write about this and all of the things that God um, had, you know, planned for me won't come to fruition because the choices that he gives us, I chose to do something else. And when I really realized he's not going to drop it in my lap, if he wants me to have a voice that's, you know, for the nation, that I have to actually open my mouth and say something. I actually have to put some things together and realizing that I can just go along la 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 with my nine to five job with the kids that are very interesting every year and still be well and comfortable Mm -hmm. I had to, to understand that that's, that's not the plans for me. I wanted, I wanted to be in line with what it is that um, he has for me to do. It. And it doesn't have to happen if you don't work the system. Does he want you to have it? Does he have a plan for you? Yes. Is it, has it been predestined before we even knew ourselves? Absolutely. But we have some things that we have to do. He has to feed off of our faith. He has to feed off of, you know, us taking, you know, chances and moving forward in the things that he has given us. And that has been the biggest motivator, hands down, is I just don't want to miss this. I don't want to mm. leave here and not have completed everything that I was purposed to complete. Definitely. That's yes. Good. yes. That's good. So now what about you, um, Trine? You know, who has been your support system or uh, what has actually helped you to not give up? Um, my daughter, um, She's been a, a, a push. She um, she was just like, I just want you to finish it so I can read it. She okay. didn't want to read anything while I was writing it. Mm -hmm. But it, it also encouraged me to finish it. Like, you know, like you were saying, Joyce, it, it really did. But the biggest supporter, two, two people have been a really big support. And that's um, my sister, Felicia, and a really good friend, Shayla. Mm -hmm. um, Shayla would come to the house and we would sit there and we throwing pages all over the place. No, fix this, fix that. But this time she couldn't come to the house because she lives in Florida and I'm in Texas. Mm -hmm. But I would call her and go, girl, I wrote this. Come on, tell me what you think. So we were on the phone editing mm. my book. <laughs> wow. And then when my sister would come into Dallas, she would actually, where's that? Let me sit in front of the computer. Let me just be comfortable. Yeah, my yeah. Pepper. <laughs> And, and she would start editing, you know, helping me edit the book. And so those two people have pushed me the most, but the person who made me write the first book, young lady who's 25 years old, heard me recite poetry one night and she said, you need to write a book. Wow. And that's, that's where it started. So when I told her, I said, I just released the second book. She said, God, doggone it. I knew you was going to do it. I was like, oh, <laughs> and send me my book. And so, but she was the initiator to start yeah. me, but the people that pushed me through that process, a good good friend, Shayla, and my sister, Felicia. Yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. And I, I do want to point this out, um, and I'm coming to you um, later, but sometimes <laughs> we might not have that support system. Um, I'm a big fan on words of affirmation, um, and I, I truly do, like, I have a relationship with God. Sometimes I do feel like, like, God, I don't hear you speaking. So <laughs> like, what should I do? Um, no, but you are with yourself 24 hours, seven days a week. And so you have to find how to motivate yourself sometimes, you know, because it's sometimes it's not going to be a people around. And I'm so thankful that um, these ladies do have that support system um, to help them. But bless you. You have to find a way to motivate yourself as well. I'm a big proponent of um, reading, especially um, autobiographies of individuals who have achieved um, great things um, to really hear and read their story of how they push through through all the adversaries and all the difficult times, because that's going to motivate you sometimes to say, man, if they can do it. I know I could do it too. Um, but Aleda, what about you? What support system did you have and what helped you not to give up? Um, well, um, I've, for years, um, I, I wanted to be published and um, it was 
this fellow author, um, her name is K.A. Williams. She's the one who told me how to get started, you know, on the process, you know, setting up my uh, Kindle Direct Publishing account and my Author Central account for Amazon and things like that. So um, I will always give credit to that sister because she didn't have to. You know, sometimes you reach out to authors who are established already and they look at you like, you know, they act kind of funny sometimes, but this sister, as established as she is, she took time out, answered every question that I have had, even when I became a little irritating. She had patience with me and God bless her for that. Um, but I don't really have a big support system, just my friend and that's it. But um, what you were saying earlier, um, I look at people like Toni Morrison, um, people like Oprah, uh, people like Maya Angelou, um, Nikki Giovanni, and how they were able to overcome certain trials and tribulations and look at them now and the mark that they've made mm -hmm. in history. And I use these women as like a model for how my life can be if it's, if it's God's will. Mm -hmm. So that's my motivation and that's my drive. Mm -hmm. um, when I leave this earthly realm, I want people to say, you know, this young lady or this woman inspired me to be better or, mm -hmm. you know, helped me overcome this or look what she went through. I went through it as well. I just want people to be able to relate and, you know, find power in their pain and, you know, just find motivation and don't give up because people, you know, the, the devil is pushing people towards suicide and things like this now. But the things I've been through in life, a lot of people probably wouldn't handle it, but I didn't, you know, blow my brains out. You know, I mm -hmm. found an outlet through Amen. writing, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And I just, I don't want people to let the devil get the last laugh. No, you find your strength, find your power. You know, mm -hmm. all of us on this panel have been through some things, but look at us, you know, we have people watching mm -hmm. us right now that are inspired by us, you mm -hmm. know? So that th things like this is, is mo is motivational for me. Mm -hmm. you know, it's a blessing. Definitely. And, and Sharvi um, says, beautiful panel, great info shares, stay encouraged. So what about you, April? Um, what would you say to someone um, who is in on the brink of just throwing in the towel? How would you encourage them? I would tell them never, just don't give up. You know, life is going to throw you a curveball, but you got to keep on going and keep keep the faith just pray and ask God to lead you and guide you and know that this this too shall pass mm -hmm. I've been through hell and high water but I thank God that you know he sustained me and kept me because huh, it wasn't easy mm -hmm. but just to be at this point in my life now I am so so I can give nothing but God the praises. Yeah. Yeah. We to, you could sustain me. Let me play so the organ. Anything, <laughs> if you're out there and uh -huh. you feel like, you know, giving up or whatever, just pray and keep on going because you're going to look at it and, and, and the past is going to be the past. You're going to be like, oh, I went through that That's and good. I persevered. That's so good. Yeah. Just keep going. And that is so encouraging because you are able to now see how strong you are when you do um, persevere mm -hmm. through those difficult times. Um, J.A., how would you encourage that person that's on the brink of just throwing in, the throwing in the towel? The end result has to be bigger. It has to be bigger than all of the things that you're currently feeling. You have to be able to focus on truth and not reality. And the truth is, is that you're here for a purpose and this is something that you're going to do. Reality may be kids, family, lack of provision, lack of faith, doubt, worry, your own voices. Those are all realities and we're mm -hmm. not discounting them. But there is a truth and you have to attach yourself to that truth and the desire for that truth to prevail has to be stronger than everything else that you're dealing with. That's good, that's good, definitely. Motivation, I'm telling you, that's key right there. Um, you gotta look at the bigger picture of why you're doing it because that's gonna be your reminder Oh, keep going. Yes. Um, but what about you, Trine? What would you say to that person that's saying, you know what, I'm, I'm done with this? I would tell them to take a step back and go into praise, some mm -hmm. serious praise about, you know, and, and just let God lead them. But sometimes it's okay to take a step back from it 
But if you're going to take a step back, you need to go into it in some serious praise and prayer and ask God, what is it that you want me to say? Because man, the, the first, when I was writing that first book and I wanted to just give up and say, nope, I'm not going to release it. And then I finally got to a point, I said, well, Lord, what do you want me to say? Mm-hmm. And my, I'm going to tell you, when, when you get ready and you say that prayer and, and you ask God to give you them words, be prepared to be yeah. up at two, three, four, <laughs> five o'clock in the morning because he's going to tell you when he get ready to tell you. And I found myself recording so much in my phone and it was coming so fast, I couldn't even type it that fast. Mm-hmm. All I could do was record it in my phone. Sometimes it was little pieces and I had to come back and he was like, okay, remember I gave you that little other piece. I want you to put that piece with this little piece. Yeah. And so I would say sometimes you do it's, you know, you might have to take that step back, but when you do go into it in praise and prayer and ask God, what do you want me to say? Don't just completely throw it away because yeah. God's giving you something for a reason. But let me, let, let me ask you something, because I know that we've been talking about God a lot um, on the show. Trine, what about that viewer that is an author that has no relationship with God. You know, they're like, I mean, we live in America. Everybody's heard about God, you know, but they like, I just can't relate to what she's saying. You Mm. still give them a word of encouragement and understanding that there's still a lesson to be learned from what it is that you're writing about. What, and you ask that, that question, that's when that that teacher mode in you kind of comes out. What is it you really want to say? Okay. What do you want your reader to learn from writing this Mm -hmm. what do they have to gain how are you going to say this without being offensive or sounding like you're trying to persuade them into something that they may not even want to do or be or even think about okay and it still gives them an encouragement to say okay well let me step back and go think about this but I ain't throwing in the towel yet I'm gonna go sit over here and I'm gonna think about it Okay. But that way you're still encouraging them without saying, well, shoot, throw in the towel. You want to quit, quit. Hmm. But you're giving them another way to think about what it is that they're writing and what they're writing for. Okay. Right. Okay. So now what about you, Aleda? Um, what would you say to that individual that just wants to stop all together? Um, remember why you began. Mm -hmm. Um, that fire that was inside of you. Oh, I have to put this book out. I have to do this. You have to go back to that, you know, because that is your calling. Something you're driven to do, you know, it wakes you up at two or three o'clock in the morning and you have to hurry up and make a note on your phone. Okay, I could add this to my book. Yes, that that is the reason why you don't give up. Mm. That is the reason why you keep on trucking, baby. You know? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I would tell someone. And also um, I could add find inspiration. You Mm -hmm. know, we as writers, we have the greatest gift y'all because the creator he gave us, um, we're able to, you know, paint with our words. So Mm -hmm. we're like artists, you know, Mm -hmm. with storytelling and our poems and things like that. And um, I just feel like, you know, once you find what your creative niche is, what your talent is, you go with that. You let it grow. You let it bloom. And you can find inspiration from a film, you know, a song, you know, even another author, you know, inspiration is all around us. You know, that's the world we live in. Um, But that's what I would tell, you know, who, if anyone is listening right now, that's an author and they feel like they want to give up or they can't find motivation. No, it's no excuses. I feel it's no excuses. And coming from me, (laughs) I'm telling y'all, it's no excuses. And I agree with I I agree with whatever with every last one of these sisters and what they've had to say tonight. I I agree. You know, this yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I'm so thankful that we had this uh this episode because I just know that um many a times we just want to give up and um people's testimonies truly encourage individuals um and that's why the bible does teach us to share our testimony because it has the opportunity to point people to who jesus christ is and who he can possibly be um in your life so you know if you are that viewer that that's saying to yourself you know i i hear they talking a lot about god and jesus and things like that um 
I am a believer as well. And I just know for a fact that um, Jesus Christ is the only one that can ultimately um, show you who he created you to be because he is the one that created you. Um, and so I, I really do encourage you to um, just try God out. You know, um, if, if, if you do not have a Bible um, in your home, you got a phone, you got the internet because you watching us, you got it. Uh, so just go to BibleGateway.com and really just um, ask whoever you think this God is to possibly just begin to speak to your heart. And he will definitely do that. Um, I thank you so much for taking your time out to watch another episode of Authors Helping Authors um, with our topic today is no longer is it worth it. It's definitely worth it because you have tuned into this episode. Um, but make sure you continue to share this episode so that more people will know about our authors and their books if you have been encouraged by these ladies i duly do recommend that you um follow their social media um also just shoot them an email um if they listed their email address and let them know how much they've been encouragement um to you and to keep on trucking on also we would love for you to um like i said purchase their book maybe their book may not be for you but you could always be in um the the mindset of being a giver so maybe this book is really just good for somebody else that you may know those um those links are listed in the description box as well we hope that you have a great night and we will talk to you all later bye-bye bye, -bye. bye. <laughs> bye. Thank you.